actually there's another issue which has come up in my own research and it relates to the fact that many people consider it a bidah to go into congregation and pray the Qiyam al-Layl. And this started in the Khalifa of Omar radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. Could you comment on this? People have a misconception that Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he was the one who started this congregation Salah, Qiyam al-Layl during Ramadan. It's a misconception. But in fact, it is he who revived the Sunnah of the Prophet. As I mentioned earlier in the Hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Tarawi, Hadith number 2012, that the Prophet was the person who offered Qiyamul Layl people, joined him in congregation, and he allowed it. Then later on, next night, the whole mosque was filled, and third night it was overflowing, and fourth night didn't come out purposely. From this Hadith, we come to know that it was the Prophet who started this, and Sunnah of the Prophet. But at the time of Hazrat Abu Bakr, my life prayed with him, there were hardly any people who prayed that. Even in the starting of the caliphate of Hazrat Umar, it was the same thing, my life prayed with him. It's further mentioned in the hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Tarawi, hadith number 2010. The Sahaba says that he was walking along with Hazrat Umar, one of the mosques, my life prayed with him, and he finds that people were praying individually. And some people were praying in a small group. So, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. He gathered all the people and he said, let's make one jama. And he appointed Ubayy bin Kaif, may Allah be pleased with him, to lead the salah. And everyone prayed behind him. And later on, when he comes back after a few nights, he finds that people are praying in one congregation. And then he comments, it is preferable to pray when the people are sleeping than what they are praying now. Because, you know, they prayed immediately after Isha Salah, as I mentioned earlier. So praying the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan, what people call as Tarawih, it's preferable to pray in the last one third of night. But if you pray early also, it's no problem. Now coming back to the question when he said that it's an excellent bidah, people misunderstand the statement and they say, oh, that means the bidah can be good. Bidah is normally in the Sharia, means an innovation in the religion. But here, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he never used it as a bidah in the religion. There's nothing like bidah which is good. You know, because it's mentioned in the hadith of Sayyid Muslim, volume number one, hadith number 1885, that all innovations in the religion are wrong and they lead to error. And other hadith says that all innovations lead to hellfire. So all innovations are wrong. Now, based on this hadith, when Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said that it's an excellent bidah, so people normally say that bidah can be good and can be bad, good bidah is allowed. So what he really meant here was bidah in the linguistic term, not bidah in the religion. Because in linguistic term, bidah means something which is new. So at that time, people did not pray in one congregation. So he reminded them of the sunnah of the Prophet So it was going back to the sunnah of the Prophet, but for that time it was bidah linguistically, it was something new. So it doesn't mean that Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he knew it's something in the religion. He took the people back to the sunnah of the Prophet. For example, if I go to a city where people are wearing the trousers below the ankle, and if I say that, you know, wearing above the ankle is the sunnah of the Prophet. But it's a bidah for that time, because people, it's new for them. They don't know about it. So it's bidah for that time, but it's going back to the sunnah of the Prophet, wearing the trousers above the ankle. So people misunderstand the statement of Omar Mela, please with him, talking about new for that time and for that place and for that people. But actually, it is going back to the Prophet. So it is not what Hazrat Umar Mela, please with him, he innovated it. He told the people that this is what the Prophet did. And there are several such examples. Many Muslims, you know, temporary marriage done by some groups of Muslims. The Prophet had prohibited that. Hazrat Umar Mela, please with him. He knew about it. So during the seventh hijri of Tabuk, he said it is wrong. So people think he imposed it. But he knew the Prophet said it was haram, the temporary marriage. You know, it's called as muta. So just because he implemented the sunnah, which very few people knew at that time, and he was there when the Prophet said that muta, temporary marriage is haram, people think that he brought it into the deen. It's going back to the sunnah of the Prophet. Hope that